The clash between the forces of Stannis Baratheon and Tywin Lannister had turned the fields outside King's Landing into a bloody, chaotic mess. The sun was just beginning to rise over the horizon, casting an eerie light on the battle, as Stannis Baratheon's black stag banner surged forward with brutal momentum. At the heart of the fray, Stannis rode, his flaming sword a beacon of fire cutting through the Lannister lines, his forces pushing relentlessly toward victory. Tywin Lannister, perched atop his horse, his face a mask of grim determination, barked orders to his remaining bannermen, refusing to give ground despite the Baratheon onslaught. His golden armour gleamed in the dim morning light, but there was blood splattered across it, some of it his own. The battle had gone poorly for the Lannisters. Caught between the defenders of King's Landing and Stannis' reinforcements, Tywin's forces were being torn apart, and now, as Stannis himself cut a path toward Tywin, the fate of the Lannister army hung in the balance. Hold the line, Tywin roared, his voice booming across the battlefield. His soldiers fought valiantly, but the Baratheon soldiers were relentless, bolstered by their king's presence and the sight of Tywin Lannister within reach of death. Stannis, eyes cold and unyielding, urged his horse forward, cleaving through the Lannister soldiers who dared stand between him and his target. His face was set in a mask of iron resolve, he knew that this was his moment. Tywin Lannister's death would break the Lannister army and ensure his path to the Iron Throne. And then, with a final charge, Stannis reached him. The two commanders locked eyes across the battlefield, the tension between them palpable. Tywin raised his sword, his expression one of defiance, but there was a hint of something else in his eyes. Recognition, perhaps, that his end had come. With a battle cry, Tywin urged his horse towards Stannis, his sword flashing in the sunlight. But Stannis was faster. His flaming sword swung in a deadly arc, clashing against Tywin's blade with a force that sent a jarring shock through both men. For a moment, the two stood locked in combat, their swords grinding against each other as they fought for control. But Stannis, fueled by his unshakable will, overpowered Tywin, breaking through his defenses with a brutal strike, his sword burning through Tywin's armor cutting deep into the Lannister Patriarch's chest. Tywin gasped, blood spilling from his mouth as he slumped in the saddle. His eyes widened in shock. Then, in resignation, the golden line of the Lannisters had fallen. Stannis withdrew his sword and watched as Tywin toppled from his horse, hitting the ground with a heavy thud. The Lannister bannerman who had been fighting fiercely moments before now faltered, their morale shattered at the sight of their lord lying dead on the battlefield. The lion is dead, came the cry from the Baratheon soldiers, and it spread through the ranks like wildfire. Tywin Lannister is dead. Panic rippled through the Lannister forces. Some began to retreat, while others continued to fight, driven by desperation. But it was clear that the tide of the battle had turned. Jaime Lannister, watching his father fall from a distance, felt a surge of rage unlike anything he had ever known. The world seemed to narrow to a single point, Stannis Baratheon. Without thinking, without caring about the retreating soldiers around him, Jamie spurred his horse forward, cutting down anyone in his path, his face twisted into a mask of fury. He would kill Stannis if it was the last thing he did. But Jamie's charge was reckless. He fought like a man possessed, slashing and hacking through the Baratheon ranks, cutting down anyone who dared approach him. His golden armour, now splattered with blood, gleamed in the torchlight as he moved through the battlefield like a whirlwind of death. He killed dozens of men, his sword a blur of steel and blood. Yet even Jaime, the Kingslayer, could not fight an entire army alone. He soon found himself surrounded. The Kingsguard, led by the legendary Sir Barristan Selmy, converged on him, their white cloaks fluttering in the wind as they formed a ring around the raging Lannister Knight. Jaime, surrender, Barristan called out, his voice heavy with regret. You've lost. But Jamie's eyes were wild, and he spat blood onto the ground. Never, he snarled, his sword raised high. I will die before I bend the knee to Stannis. Then you will die, Barristan said quietly, and with a heavy heart he gave the signal. The King's Guard moved in, their swords flashing in the torchlight. Jamie fought with everything he had, but there were too many of them. One by one they cut him down, each blow chipping away at the strength that had once made him the most feared knight in Westeros. In the end, it was Sir Barristan himself who delivered the final blow, his sword piercing Jamie's heart. Jamie Lannister, 
the Kingslayer fell to the ground, his golden hair matted with blood. His last breath was a snarl of defiance, his hand gripping his sword even as life left his body. The Lannister army, seeing both their lord and their fiercest knight dead, began to break apart completely. The soldiers fled in every direction, abandoning the siege and leaving the battlefield to Stannis and his men. The cheers of the Baratheon soldiers rang out across the battlefield, their victory complete. Stannis, bloodied but victorious, rode through the gates of King's Landing, his flaming sword held high. Inside the Red Keep, Ned Stark stood waiting for him. The battle-worn Warden of the North knelt as Stannis approached, his face solemn and resolute. The Iron Throne is yours, Your Grace, Ned said, his voice steady. I swore an oath to protect the realm, and now I honour that oath by delivering you the crown. Stannis's cold blue eyes swept over Ned, and he nodded curtly. You have been loyal to the end, Stark. Rise. Ned rose to his feet, but before he could speak again, Stannis's gaze darkened. Where is Cersei and her bastards, he asked, his voice as sharp as steel. Ned hesitated, then nodded. They are held in the dungeons, as you ordered. Stannis wasted no time. Take me to them. Together, they descended into the bowels of the Red Keep, where Cersei, Joffrey, Tommen and Marcella were being held. Cersei, once a queen, now sat in chains, her eyes full of hatred as Stannis entered the room. My lord Stannis, she hissed, you may have won the battle, but you will never be king. No one will ever follow you. Stannis ignored her, his eyes falling on Tommen and Marcella, who stood trembling beside their mother. Burn them, Stannis ordered coldly, all of them. Ned stepped forward, his face tight with concern. Your Grace, Tommen and Marcella are innocent children. They may be Lannisters by blood, but they had no part in their parents' sins. Stannis glared at him, but Ned held his ground. I ask you, in honour of the service I have done for you, spare the children. I will take them to Winterfell as my wards. They will never threaten your reign. Stannis considered this for a long moment. His face remained impassive, but finally he nodded. Very well, Stark. Take them north. But if I hear any word of treachery, I will burn them myself. Ned bowed his head in gratitude. Thank you, Your Grace. Stannis turned his back on them, his focus already shifting to the Iron Throne that awaited him. The coronation of Stannis Baratheon was a sombre affair. There were no songs, no laughter, only the grim acknowledgement of his victory. The Iron Throne, sharp and cruel, loomed over the gathering like a spectre. Stannis took his place upon it, his face as cold and unforgiving as the iron beneath him. As the crown was placed upon his head, Stannis's eyes burned with the weight of the responsibility he now bore. The realm was his, but at what cost? Far below, in the dungeons of the Red Keep, Renly Baratheon stood before the cells that held Littlefinger and Varys. The two prisoners sat in silence, their faces unreadable. Come to gloat, my Lord Renly, Littlefinger asked, his voice dripping with sarcasm. What should I even call you now? Is it Hand of the King, the new Prince of Dragonstone? You are the heir to the Iron Throne now, are you not? Renly smiled coldly, but said nothing. He turned and walked away, leaving the question hanging in the air. The Game of Thrones was far from over.